Hello and welcome to the Your Revolution podcast. The Your Revolution podcast is a collaboration between Revolution Personal and Performance Training in Melbourne and the Me Project. The purpose of the Your Revolution podcast is to inspire you on your mission of betterment. Each week on the podcast, you'll meet game changers who have created extraordinary lives, and you'll listen to stories and lessons to empower you to make the changes necessary to your life. The Your Revolution podcast is committed to fitness, health, nutrition, mindset, community, education, empowerment, and betterment, and we hope that you can take what you learn here and apply it to your very own revolution. Okay, thanks for tuning in to episode 105, where I am joined by Damien Jones, aka The Big Rig. <laughs> Thank you very welcome much. Welcome to your Revolution podcast. Thanks very much for having me. No, you're welcome. Now, we, are, we just posted a little workout here. Uh, Damien just took us through a little bit of a strongman session. Do you be able to elaborate on what we, yeah, we so, did? Yeah, so we, uh, we just started off with the yoke. Uh, yeah, it's probably the oldest. Uh, that and Stones are the two of the oldest strongman implements in the sense that you know, they had uh, carryovers to functional use. Mm-hmm. Uh, historically, you know, the, the yoke people would uh, uh, carry their goods to and from markets or farms. Yeah. You know, uh, originally, you know, with a, with a, with a wooden uh, yeah, a wood, wooden pole across their back with their goods hanging on either mm-hmm. side. Yeah. Uh, and then with the stone, historically, you know, men and women have lifted stones you know, throughout the ages. Sure. Uh, and then uh, obviously, uh, in Celtic, uh, in, in Celtic and some Viking circles, uh, yeah. you know, there were uh, manhood stones, but uh, manhood stones probably not the correct yeah what term. Sure, uh, it was more um, proving stones, and some some in some places some stones were uh, were used uh, to settle disputes as well. Mm. So who could, you know, yeah. lift the stone the furthest, yeah, or the, or the highest, or, or whatever, or the, you know, x amount of reps uh, had a, uh, yeah, you know, would help uh, mm. to, to, you know, finalize disputes within a within yeah. a tribe. So I wish it was like that now. Yeah, yeah. I know it'd be or great. Good way to yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, sell yeah. disputes. Yeah, you have a, you have a gripe with someone rather than uh, yeah. you know. Uh, slag them off on Facebook or whatever people do these yeah, days. Yeah, no, no, Just absolutely. Go to a gym and, and start picking up some <laughs> start stones. Start picking up some stones, Ready yeah. To pick up the biggest stone, well, yeah, mm. dispute's over. Yeah, <laughs> no, indeed, indeed. Now, I was actually, so we actually are at, um, I mentioned Iron Revolution in Killaris. Now, that's actually familiar territory for the Revolution podcast because we actually did a previous episode with the owner, Aaron Scarborough. Yes. And um, yeah, I think it was episode 41 so obviously if you want to listen to that recommend you do um so it yeah. won't be as good as this one i was gonna say yeah. it probably won't be as good as this one yeah. so the only i say look massive shout out to him obviously letting us yes. uh come in here and uh yeah so use the space and um yeah it's not going to affect this episode hopefully so. not no uh, otherwise because he's my coach i'll hear about it for like yeah you probably will yeah eternity. exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> Quite right. All right. Well, I guess the best place to start this, as we always do, are you able to, I guess, give us a little bit of introduction of who you are, a little intro? Uh, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm Damien Jones, uh, a master's athlete. I'm 41. Mm-hmm. Um, I um, have been involved in sport my entire life. Yep. Um, was uh, a, a very good rower, uh, an above average rugby player at high school. Mm-hmm. Um, Kept playing rugby on and off throughout the years, uh, and uh, then for a period of time in my early thirties, I did nothing and just got fat. Yeah. Um, well, fat by my standards. Sure. Um, uh, and so you're doing at least like gym work. Or I was anything? doing nothing. No, absolutely nothing. No, I I landed this amazing corporate career, and I, I threw myself into that for yeah probably eighteen months just to to really establish myself in that business, mm. and. Uh, yeah, I, I remember seeing this photo. You know, it was one of those. Uh, uh, it, was, it was my uh, wake up call where I saw this photo. Yeah. Uh, I was with my, a couple of my siblings, and I went, Ooh, "Who's that guy?" And it was me. Yeah. Uh, and I went, "Okay, something needs to change." So. Sure. Uh, pretty much effectively, the next day I walked into a gym in the city near my work, um, asked for the, asked them to who was the best strength and conditioning coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had. Uh, and it was a, a guy called um, Ben McCarthy, who's, who's still a friend of mine now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he got me on the path of, of lifting again. 
Okay. Um, you know, yeah. I had a really weak core and I had to fix that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're doing a lot of core work, you know, because when you've been sitting on your, sitting down in an office on a desk, mm. you know, you just, everything gets flabby and, sl and sure. soft. Yeah. So, uh, and then was doing that for a year or two, mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe about 18 months. And then he mentioned, uh, when we were talking about Strongman and, and he mentioned uh, uh, Aaron's gym. Yeah. Uh, it took me probably maybe another six months to finally mm. come and I, I did one session and then that was it. I was, and you haven't looked back. I was hooked. Yeah. I was just hooked. Yeah. Oh, was, awesome. Um, it's just, I, it's, there's something about that raw, it, it's honest. It's, you know, like yeah. lifting weights uh, of, of any description, so you know, powerlifting, Ollie lifting, sure, yeah, yeah. strong man, strong man, just yeah. just lifting, you know, in the gym. Mm -hmm. It's honest because the iron doesn't lie. Yeah, yeah, you know, I like that. Yeah, yeah, the iron doesn't lie. Yeah, you, know, you, you can either lift it or you can't. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can't, then you need to build a plan so you can. Yeah, yeah, and no. that's that's always I would, it's the most honest um, pursuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the iron doesn't lie. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. Please, like, it's, a, yeah. it's not mine. I'm pretty sure I stole it from someone else. Yeah, no, no, for sure. <laughs> now, um, I want to go actually back to your teenage years because you mentioned you were a very talented rower. Now, yes. I believe my research correct me. You yep. like went to the AIS as well. I did. I went yep. to. I, 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 I was. Uh, I was part of an AIS development uh, pro program mm -hmm. uh, in 1993. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I was, I was 94, it was 90, yeah, 93, possibly 94. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I was, I was, a, I, I was a very good junior roller. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And did you think rowing was long term? Do you think that was what you were going to do? I or? did. Yeah? I did. I, just... I, 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 uh, I had big dreams of, of rowing for Australia and, and, yeah. uh, and obviously, uh, the Olympics I was looking at was 2000. So you know, mm -hmm. I finished high school in 95. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just, I just got distracted after school. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough sport, actually. I know, um, well, actually, my high school teacher, I know maybe you might know him, because I'm pretty sure he did represent 2000, uh, Hamie Fernandez. I do know the name, yeah. So he was my PE teacher. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, silver medalist. Um, yeah. So I know the commitment. Um, yes. Yeah, the, you know, rowing, obviously. It, 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 so, it, and yeah. even, like, at the high school level, it was, it was crazy. It was, um, mm. uh, Seven, you know, five to seven sessions on the water. Um, every lunchtime we'd be training. Uh, our coach had us training every lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, plus, plus gym sessions. Mm -hmm. You know, it was even at high school level. We, you know, it's uh, we we were training as elite athletes. At, yeah. At, at the age of fifteen. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you're 15, you know, you've got energy to burn. You can of course, it. yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's not like you know today where. Yeah, you know, forty one. I, I do. I, I, there's no way I could train with that level of intense. Oh, okay, I could, but yeah. I mean, it would take me a lot longer to build up to. Sure. When you're a fifteen year old, you go, yeah, I can just do that. Before you don't even think about it. You don't just, think you just about do it. it. Yeah. You know, you know to yeah. have that, that uh, that level yeah. of energy and 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 the capability of not having to have doms next day or four days afterwards. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. No. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So it's rowing, and then in terms of rugby union, you said it was very on and off. So. Yeah. So you played growing up through school and then representing the club level as well? That... Yeah, I was always, uh, you know, I was always a, a seconds or thirds 15 at club level. I was yeah. like a, um, you know, some people go, oh, I would have been the first if I hadn't done my knee. I just wasn't good enough. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, I, I was just, um, I just enjoyed playing. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, again, it's a really, not, it's, it's, it's another really honest sport because, you know, um, and I, I like the fact that uh, in ninety eight percent of the games I was involved with, mm. you step over the low line and it's 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 battle, it's a war. Yeah, you know, it's fifteen men, you know, versus fifteen men. Yeah, so running into each other. Um, sure. yeah. And then you step over that white line, and yeah. whatever happened on the pitch is left on the pitch. Correct. Um, yeah. Unless it was particularly dirty, yeah. uh, and then uh, it, it doesn't seem to happen so much in rugby union. It's it, it's mm. it definitely. Um, has a has a code where there there have been dirty players and there are dirty of things. Of course, yeah. Uh, and and a shout out to the French for being the dirtiest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not so much. But you know, it's just yeah, yeah. That's tongue in cheek, but of course, yeah. Um, look, it, it's 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 a rough game. It is, you, yeah. you know that yourself. Absolutely. You know, you know, you're, yeah. you're, if you're at the bottom of a ruck, 
stuff happens yeah. sometimes on purpose not most of the time not on purpose yeah um because everyone want you know you want that ball mm-hmm. you know and, and if your body is in the way of me pushing over to take yeah. take ownership of that ball mm-hmm. then sorry you're gonna get screwed up and it's yeah. not as long as you're not raking yeah you know i think that's always um that's a big thing yeah. Yeah. it's a big thing and you know when you're you know, you're a young kid and you come home and you've got stop marks on your face and your mum's yeah. like, what the hell? You know, yeah. you're like, you're never playing this game again. I'm like, yeah. yes, I am. Yeah. You know, uh, so it just happens, you know. Um, it's funny you mentioned about the raking. I remember, um, this was back when I, we already did a tour, I think it was in grade 10 when I tour in Canada. Yeah. And also maybe you don't know, but the hemispheres are different rules. They had at the time, the Southern Hemisphere, they were in the process of changing the rules. So, for example, about the long arm and the short arm penalties. Yes. And, the one thing over there in Canada is they ruck and they rake like oh, crazy. Wow. And the first game we played against this high school team off the kickoff, I think by the first 10 minutes, half every our uh, jerseys were all <laughs> shreds. <laughs> and we had these nice pre jerseys. My um my mum at the time, because she worked at the school club, she just helped design these jer- these beautiful jerseys. Yeah. Half of them were destroyed by oh, the opening yeah. 10, 15 minutes because these guys just destroyed them. They destroyed them. They yeah. just rucked, yeah, raked and rucked. It was um, yeah, it was, it was a real eye opener. Yeah, like, and look, yeah. I was in the rucking period, so when yeah. I was playing, it was um, it was still allowed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Excessive raking wasn't. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was it was it was that grey area where if you stood over someone, you, you would. You, you, just stood on them you know what I mean Um, if you were seen to be you know that that action of actually raking raking yeah uh, yeah, of course it was going to be a penalty Mm -hmm. Um, yeah so you would play within the rules and now that's going to make me sound like a dirty player but no but that's that's what it is it was just you know if if someone was there and they weren't you know you would just stand on them it's not necessarily because some people wouldn't even get off the ball correct they would just stay on the ball correct so and 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 at schoolboy level, the, yeah. the you know the referees are doing the best they can do. Mm-hmm. But as you know, the level of refereeing at schoolboy level can be up and down. It can vary. You, know, you can yeah. have one week you can have an amazing referee, yeah. uh, and the following week <laughs> you can have a spud. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is just a nice way. So, yeah. But you know, in these these people don't get paid much, and, and they do, yeah, so. Mm. But. I think rugby is one of the, the few sports where, when the referee brings people in, yeah, to have chats. You know, and you'll have, you know, Nigel Owens. He's, Nigel Owens. He's just probably he's by far my favourite. Yeah, favorite. me too. Yeah, you know, he'll, he'll bring them in. He'll say things in a cheeky way, yeah. and you'll have this six foot four, all black, you know, guy yeah. who's one hundred twenty kilos. Go, no problem, sir. No problem. Yeah. And and you know, yeah. I I I like that that aspect of the game has continued. Yeah. There, there are elements of the game that have changed that yeah. I'm going to sound like an old person and oh, mm-hmm. it's not as good as it used to be. Yeah. It's just it's just changed and mm-hmm. I haven't accepted that change. Yeah. Um, mainly because of all of this suck and have for like the last 15 years. Yeah, well, it's, it's been a tough period. Yeah, it's been a tough period. Yeah. Um, Even now. Yeah, going oh, yeah, we'll see. We'll come yeah. to you. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. Maybe obviously. we can do a whole podcast on the World Cup. I was going to say, even, I was even about Israel Flau stuff in the background, which doesn't look like that's going to resolve anytime soon. No. It's, it's uh, No. Yeah. That's um, Yeah, I have opinions on that, but I'm not going to voice them. Yeah, I think mean, no, we'll say <laughs> Check out my Instagram. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, no, no. I'll, I'll tell people what I really I think mean. it's funny we're actually talking rugby. Everyone thought it was AFL. Uh, we're yeah, too rugby. No, we're too rugby. And I'm a Victorian we're, boy, we're, so. I know. Yeah, which so. Canberra boy, Victorian boy. And we're, we're, talking, talking, we're talking the real game. Has exactly, a World yeah. Cup. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Has history. Played oh. in multiple nations. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <I'll, laughs> we'll leave it there. Yeah. We'll leave it there. Now, as you touched on, you are, I said you are a strongman athlete. Yes. Uh, now, can you explain, I guess, to I guess the audience who don't know what strongman training is, what exactly it is, and um, yeah, I mean, you always try to touch on the historical point of view, but um, yeah, how yeah. would you best I guess, describe it? Um, so, strongman training is very similar to any uh, strength and conditioning mm-hmm. you know, program. So, you'll, you'll have a yeah. Um, uh, I, I I've spent most of my career focusing more on the strength rather yep. than the conditioning, uh, which has been to a detriment detriment to myself. So I'm, I'm actually yeah. adding in more of the conditioning. Sure. Um, 
but it's it's just a slow it's just you know with everything it's just you know you start you know you can deadlift 100 kilos and then you just you know you're slowly building that up and it's um mm -hmm. you know um you know aaron is my coach has been the whole time we program uh, depending on the period of the month you know, mm -hmm. year we are with with competitions mm -hmm. um pretty much everything's done in, in like a like a uh, usually a, a, a nine or 13 week block yeah you know with with like deload weeks etc sure um, so we'll do three weeks slight deload week you know four weeks deload deload it depends on where we're at so yeah um very periodized it's very structured correct yeah um you know uh every now and then having you know just max out days because i think you need to vary your training you know I, I, for, for me anyway and, and Aaron, aaron's accepted that now i think yeah. um Every now and then, you know, you just wake up in the morning, you're feeling really fresh and you're yep. feeling ready and you think, you know, today I'm going to try a max squat. A PB. A PB or, or, PB or yeah. yeah. and it, you just don't, you know, you don't do it every week because it's pointless. Sure. But, um, you know, after a number of years, when you, when you fit your hit, your body's feeling good. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to try for that. Mm. Um, yeah. But it, it's just, it, yeah, it, it's, it's just, it's just a standard strength and conditioning program, mm. uh, that, uh, on weekends has um, event training day yeah um, or you know so you know a lot of people will do squat bench deadlift and then variants around those yeah um, I'll also have an overhead day yeah with like with you know so you know you might have uh, this is my squat day so I, I rather than back squat um, to save my shoulders I will safety bar squat yeah uh, and then add you know four or five accessories after that sure to yeah. add, add you know accessories are the biggest thing and yeah um and part of and part of that's pretty overlooked yeah like absolutely accessories, yeah and and hypertrophy as well like hypertrophy, yeah. doing hypertrophy programming um as part of your strength and conditioning is really mm -hmm. important too because um bigger muscles become stronger muscles yeah um mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily mean like bodybuilding bigger no, muscles yeah it means course. lean mass muscle yeah you know you don't have to have you know 24 inch arms or whatever these yeah. bodybuilders have got these days um, yeah definitely. yeah um probably the best bodybuilder around who's really strong right now that i know of is mm -hmm. uh, a guy called josh levenowitz Le Le yeah he's a he's a victorian um really strong guy really lovely guy I've had a chance to meet him twice and mm -hmm. um he's got a plus 300 kilo deadlift plus 300 kilo squat so he's no wow. slouch yeah you know he's and he, he works hard mm -hmm. but he's also a really big man yeah. So, um, you know, that fallacy that bodybuilders don't do strength and conditioning. Yeah. It's sort of not true anymore. Yeah. It hasn't been for a long time. No, so, no. So it's yeah. like that thing that people say, but yeah. Uh, okay. Now, is it fair to say, look, I mean, I even actually, I kind of spoke to you when we were downstairs. I mean, the thing I find strongman really unique, I think it's by far the most functional, like it doesn't get any more functional than... No, in no. In its purest form, like strength training. Like Correct. You know, like farmer's handles... You pick up weight, you walk with them. Yeah. You try to run with them. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, 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 it's factoring in grip strength. It's factoring in uh, anaerobic to a to a to, mm -hmm. a to a point. Aerobic to a little point if it's a yeah. really long farmers run competition. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then just being able to pick up and then move with the weight. Yeah. You know, no. Engage having your core engaged core the engaged. whole time. Mm. Um, being able to breathe while you're, you're keeping your core engaged. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's it's. It, it, it is possible Pro yeah you're probably right and I'll, uh, I'm biased so I'm going to say yes of course it's mm. the most functional but obviously you come from a different background you come from a rowing background a rugby background yeah. but training compared to that it's very different yeah yeah. so so rugby obviously does have a strength basis but obviously yeah. massive on the cardio cardiovascular as well yeah. um, and then rowing is, is endurance based training weights uh, yeah. and you know, lots of time on the water cardiovascularly. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was rowing, you know, you might do prone prone bench rows, five by twenty. So it's a lighter weight, but you yeah, just you just, just pump the pumping it, pumping, yeah. pumping it out, pumping yeah, it out, pumping yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squats, you might just be doing yeah you know, sixty kilo squats, but you're doing three by twenty, five by twenty. It's just that mm -hmm. rep repetition, repetition, getting the the body to that point where it's burning and then pushing through. Yeah. Um, where you know the strength based training. Um, you know, in the off season, you might you might do some of that Bulgarian stuff, which is just or, or German volume training, which is yeah, horrible. Yeah. GBT. Um, but you know, peaking coming into a competition, if it's a you know, say for the Arnold, the amateur, yeah. Arnold, it's quite a heavy program uh, competition for me anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, 
as, as we're coming in, we're, we're looking at five by fives, three yeah. by threes, three by twos, okay. three yeah. by ones, ones yeah. you know, um, as we're leading in. So. Sure. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's, in, that's interesting. Yeah. Now, I suppose in terms of your, I guess, like, was it Aaron, I guess, was it your first exposed to strongman training or did you know about it? I did some to... Highland Games stuff when I was 18. Oh, okay, you did actually that, I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, so I, okay, there's, there's, a, there's a, a legend of Australian Highland Games called Billy Binks uh, yeah, and, <laughs> and uh, his son, uh, William Binks. Yeah. And I did some training with him um, yeah, when I was 18 and, mm-hmm. and a pup uh, and liked it. Uh, but yeah, it just sort of just, just drifted away. It was good. Yeah. I, I've been at a Catholic all boys school all my life, and I was now exposed to girls and a bit of freedom. freedom so it was yeah. just it was just a, it was it was an interest. Yeah, I just kicking myself now for not sticking yeah, at it. Sticking but out. I found it again. So yeah. I mean, I've been able to reconnect with Billy Binks and, and get involved in the Highland Games again, mm-hmm. which is. Trend. You just recently competed in that? I uh, think I saw the yeah, some... uh, in Ringwood. I was, Ringwood, it was yeah. the first first time I competed in the Highland Games and had almost zero training, mm-hmm. uh, which is always fun. It's mm-hmm. you know it was I knew what events were coming up, but uh, yeah, I was, I was lucky enough to get a quick shot put and, and wait for distance uh, session in with a, a mate of mine. Yeah, uh, and then I just competed the, the following week. Yeah, <laughs> so trying to pick up a cable for the first time was interesting. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm sure. Well, I think yeah. this is kind of a recurring, I mean, it's a theme in this is, uh, I take it you just love competition. It's not about... Well, it's not no, I love about. I love competing. Um, and it's and, and I don't love competing. Oh, like, everyone likes to win. Yeah. Um, you know, we, like, we all like to win. Of course, yeah. But um, I just love competing. I just, I yeah. think, um, it's, it's testing yourself. Yeah. And, and it's putting yourself under stress and pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, not only, not to... To, to perform but to see what you can do on the day yeah like I just yeah and, it, and it, when, when you've been doing you know strength training box it's good to see the combination of of you know the competition is you know for me is the end product of of that training block yeah all that yeah, hard work all that hard work like, yeah of course you know, um, mm-hmm. so pretty much at every competition I've had like, you know, PBs or um, yeah yeah because you know, it's at the end of a massive training block so. of course yeah absolutely makes sense now, I guess when you started initially strongman training, was it what you expected, or did it surprise I, you? Or yeah, look, I, I don't know if I really had expectation. I knew I was going to come in and, and lift some weird things, and yeah, you know, I, I got on the yoke for the first time, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. It threw me around, and yeah, um, you know, I probably pushed it too hard, and I tried to log, and mm-hmm. um, and, and and I definitely had a go at the stones, you know, because stones is uh, one of the, the older. Mm. You know, strongman events, and um, mm. I, I, yeah, I don't know what it was. I think it was just because it's so raw. Yeah. It, it and and yeah, you know, I just wanted I wanted to just do more of it. I, mm-hmm. I, was, I was yeah. The first session here, you know, it was and uh, you know, I found everyone really friendly too. Yeah. You know, it's um like community was very friendly. Community, like yeah, culture. and also um. Not many, not many egos. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it was just like, it's sort of hard to have ego when you, when you're all yeah. trying to lift weights. Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, people, people, you know, build that community. So Aaron, you know, Aaron builds that community in yeah. his gym, you know, and so, um, you know, also another gym I train at in Strong Geelong, you know, Tyson, you know, the owners of these gyms build that community. Sure. You know, I mean, yeah. they, they keep the ego out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, because we've all been to commercial gyms where you know you've got you know the, the guy walking around yeah. with the ego and it's just like yeah no just we don't need to do it no I mean, we're all everyone's on their own journey of fitness whatever of that course is. yeah you know, we're all point. yeah it doesn't matter it's all relative like I, I think you know when someone comes in and 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 deadlifts 150 kilos it's the first time they've ever did lift deadlifts of 150 kilos yeah. it's an incredible achievement absolutely yeah it's no less or more than say my 300 mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's, it's you know that, for them that's that's just as important absolutely yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah and, and people like Aaron you know build that environment mm-hmm. you know so you know we're, we're, we're lucky to have people like that yeah no absolutely would you say Aaron's put in was like a really big influence early on initially starting the training absolutely yeah. absolutely and there was you know some other old school members that were you know some of them are still around and some of them are you know just busy with life and stuff yeah. like that of so, course yeah um, okay 
you know, there was um, you know, strongman sat days. It was it was it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, um, now I tend to do a lot of my strongman training alone. Sure. Um, it just seems to fit where I'm at now in my in yeah. my, my I don't like to say strongman career because it's a hobby, but in my sport, it yeah, works better for me. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, now to, to predominantly train alone. Mm -hmm. um, leading into a comp, I like to train with a few people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those, those the early days of, of strongman sat days, it was it was a lot of fun. It was just yeah, you know, and and you know, pushing and screaming and shouting at each other and yeah. and, and inappropriate jokes. And, of course, yeah. You know, it's just just the, the standard fun, stuff. Yeah. The standard stuff. Yeah. Was, I think that seemed surprised me at strongman training. I always seem to think it was more of like an individual. I didn't like obviously, but I mean, until that sort of team aspect and it's an individual sport, but yeah. it's, a, it's 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 a team that helps you get there. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it it, 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 it is a weird thing that is. And I, I I I've seen it with powerlifting too. You know, because I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the strongman gyms also have powerlifters and stuff like that. There's a lot of crossover. Yeah, of course. Um, I see that I see that in powerlifting too. You know, when there's mm. um, you know, I was at Strong's along the other night and. There was, there was a, a young bloke who went for his first 300 kilo deadlift and the whole gym stopped and was cheering him on. Yeah. You know, there was a, another mate of mine, um, Steve, and he he's getting ready for um, the Winter Cup, GPC Winter Cup. Yep. And he, he went for a 295 squat, the whole gym stopped oh, and was cheering yeah. him on. Wow. I, know, you know, it ha I know it happens here at Iron Rev too. Yeah. It's just like, you know, that, that community where you know, and it, 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 look, it, it didn't. That person didn't need to have be a three hundred kilo deadlift. It could yeah. have been someone's first two hundred kilo course, deadlift. Of course, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The gym stops cheering it on. Cheering I just, on. I, know, I just love that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just. Uh, yeah. No, that's really good. At the end of the day, we're just meant to try and make the world a slightly better place. Yeah. And um, no. rather than be a douche, just be a nice person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Now let's go a little bit from, I guess, so we talked about obviously how you first walked through the doors. Yep. Uh, do you remember your first competition? I do. And if you, if so, can you share uh, your experience, I guess, what you took away from it? Um, I was ill prepared for it. Okay. Yeah, you know, and I, I think, you know, I, I, um, I think it was uh, one of Aaron's strength challenges, uh, or it might have been. Um, like an in-house? Yeah, it was an in-house competition. Was it? No, it was, a, it was an Arnold qualifier. Okay. Big one. Yeah. So it, was, like... it wasn't VSM, but it was an Arnold qualifier. Okay. Um, I didn't come last. Um, that's been, that's always been my <laughs> thing in competitions is not yeah. to come last. I think everyone in some of the back of their mind. Yeah. It's yeah. So the... to this day, touch wood, I've, I've not yeah. come last in the competition. Uh, I'm sure it will happen eventually. And then maybe that's where it's time to hang up hang the belt. Up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Oh, I think I did it like 70 or 80 kilo log, mm -hmm. 240 kilo deadlift. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't crazy numbers. Yeah. Um, I had crazy ideas in my head. Like, I actually thought I was going to qualify for the Arnold, which yeah. I was just delusional in what, not delusional, but I was just, for me, I just wanted to compete at the Arnold, you know, because I'd seen it and mm -hmm. I just thought, well, you know, like, that's I wanted it. to be there. I, I want to be there. I'd like to be in that competition. Yep. Um, when I didn't qualify, I wasn't overly bummed because I was also a realist and realised I'd been in mm. the sport maybe, oh, very, not very long, not very long at all. Yeah. Uh, and I was definitely not ready to compete at that level. Mm -hmm. um, but I just remember it being a lot of fun, a lot of screaming and, and, and being really tired. Yeah. You know, like, and, and, the first time I actually felt um, like you know that when your central nervous system is completely fried, yeah, and like you wake up the next morning and you're just like, crap, I don't know how I'm gonna walk today. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I like competing. Mm -hmm. I like watching other people compete too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, when you see other people achieve, you know, at the end of their training blocks as well. I like, I like seeing people do well. Yeah. Um, even if it means they're beating me, yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. Like, if you you, you got to win like a champion, but you got to lose like a champion as well. Yeah, you know, and I think that's been sometimes can get lost. Mm -hmm. Is it's okay to be beaten? It's yeah. okay not to be the best. Sure, it still sucks. Yeah, no, but but yeah. 
be a gentleman about it. Be a lady about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's funny. It doesn't, doesn't like. It's always been a bit forgotten. I mean, sometimes people forget about the. Yeah, maybe I'm showing my age. I'm like, yeah. Back in my day, yeah. I, mean, I don't want to sound like that guy, but maybe yeah. I'm starting to sound like that guy. Mm. It's just um, like it's okay to lose. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes, and it's okay for things not to go your way. Yeah. It's not gonna. It's not the end of the world. That's right. It, and you it, always will have a chance to correct. You know, correct. Unless again. you get a major injury and, and, and it finishes your your, your sporting career. Yeah. But even then, you know, I mean, how many how many incredible athletes have you know horrible accidents happen to them? Mm. You know, and, and, and touch wood, it never happens to you know, some of the people. Anyone I know. Yeah. They end up wheelchair bound or etc. They come back as Paralympians or Paral yeah. athletes. And it's it's amazing. It is. Yeah. You know, in like. Um, no inspiring absolutely. I actually think yeah. you know I think para athletes are more impressive than able bodied athletes well they are mm. you know what I mean especially you know you watch um, I can't think of his name that tennis player it's just, he's won every grand slam he won, just won Wimbledon the Australian guy oh yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of his name I saw him in the Australian Open yeah. he's an incredible yeah. athlete he's, he's amazing like how do you how do you play like, like, like tennis is a hard game when you've got two legs as it is yeah, yeah. tennis in a wheelchair on grass. On grass. It's yeah. not like, you know. So I know the Australian Open is it's on on a, on on a hard court. surface. Yeah. In America, it's on a hard surface. But the French Open and then Wimbledon. Yeah. Fre- the French Open is on clay. Clay. It's still on clay if you're in a wheelchair. Yeah. And and Wimbledon's still on grass if yeah. you're in a wheelchair. Like, that's amazing. No, I, I just didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you got the you know, the murder ball guys that play you know rugby and basketball yeah. in wheelchairs. Yeah, brutal. No, I love are. watching that. Yeah. Like they they hurled themselves into each other, mm. um, with with a you know they're they're rolling weapons. Oh yeah, God, it's incredible watch. Yeah, no, it is. Um, I got a, a good mate actually. Oh, I was a friend of my older brothers. He was um you know it was a very unfortunate accident. Um, became quadriplegic, and again represented Australia. Went for wheelchair rugby. I remember that was the first time I got exposed to it, and oh, I was yeah blown away. I could not believe yeah. the physicality. Of, and they're thinking they're in wheelchair and like yeah. this sport like and it's <laughs> and the, even the skill and someone at the skill like they're still doing everything out it's like correct correct yeah it's, it, it's, it blew me away yeah. it actually blew me away yeah. and I, I, yeah. I wish there was more exposure for the para athletes yeah because um, the level of skill tenacity uh, that they've had to go through to get to where they are no, not to take away from able-bodied athletes, but they've yeah. had an extra level of difficulty, yeah. and they've gone, I'm not going to let that stop me. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Now, um, I suppose, well, we, well, we're on the strongman, still talking about your training. For someone, I guess, uh, you know, come off the street, who's wanting to give strongman training a, a go, like, what, what advice, I suppose, would you give them, or? Uh, I'd, I'd find a really good gym, so, yeah. um, yeah, in Victoria, um, there's three really good gyms that I know of. So there's obviously Iron Revolution here yep, in East Yeah. Yep. Um, sorry, there's, my apologies. There's there's there's, there's five. I'll, I'll I'll stop. There's five. So there's here. Yep. There's East Keelor, Iron Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got uh, Strong Geelong, owned by Tyson Morrissey. What pound for pound, one of the strongest guys in Australia. Yeah. Um, in I think in Caram Downs you've got um, the Victorian Strength Club owned by um, Smitty really lovely guy amazing athlete himself he, yeah. he runs there um, in Ballarat you've got um, CB Fitness run by Kay uh, and then down in Warrnambool now there's a strong man mm. there's a strong man down there at um, no, oh, Momentum Fitness yep and, yeah and, yeah and, name's Yapo yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're, they're, they're doing a strong man down there and um, yeah, he's very well known yeah he's out he's the favorite revolution yeah. ah yeah there you go so um, you know I mean like you've got um, strong man's taking off and, yeah and it's taking off because CrossFit did really well and people then want, yeah. after they did the CrossFit for a little while wanted to do other type of lifting mm-hmm. they had strong man ollie lifting ollie. Hot, hot, you know, not, not so much Highland Games uh, power lifting power, yeah you know um all three of those sports can thank CrossFit yeah. for the greater exposure and yeah. you know, like, look at Rogue. Rogue now sponsors World's Strongest Man. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. You know, they're now building uh, strongman equipment. You know? mm. um, it's 
yeah, it's you know we're, in Victoria we we're really lucky. There's there's clubs everywhere, and then mm. now there's a lot of I know there's a lot of CrossFit boxes too, and I know Revo Revo's yeah. got you know strongman gear. So mm. a lot of you know you've got obviously dedicated strength and conditioning strongman slash powerlifting gyms, yeah, and then you've got you know other fringe gyms that see um, some of the, uh, the see the strongman stuff and go ah. Oh, yeah. We'll put those in. We'll grab that. We'll grab that. Because yeah. that fun, you know, functional training of, of getting someone up on farmers' handles is really important. Yeah. Uh, you know, you just yoke yourself. You know, if you yeah. could get more people yoking in a controlled situation, mm -hmm. it's going to have better benefits. You know, to their core, yeah. uh, strength, conditioning, mm -hmm. um, and it's empowering. Yeah. I mean, yeah, who doesn't want to pick up someone heavy and, and go walk from point A to point yeah, B? Yeah, or, yeah. No. Or when you pick up a stone, you know, and you and you load it yeah. up. You know, you're doing something that human beings have been doing, you know, since the dawn of time. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, that's, that's that's how raw it is, you know what I mean? So, you know, when we were, when we started, you know, building homes and things like that, we were picking the stones up. Picking stuff up, yeah. yeah. So, we're, 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 you know, it's... it's it's going back historically to, to our, our, our deepest roots. Yeah, no, that's a good way to put it. I think the biggest thing I've, I mean, that's just really like for me is there's so much carryover to strongman that can go to any sport or anything. Correct. Like, we're talking, you can just take the farmer carries, for example, like something I've done for a few years. Like, you know, not just, you know, not talking about, you know, your grip, your forearms, your back, your lungs, like just so much stuff going on. And like, and then that sort of goes for all the other exercises, like the yoke or the, yeah. the Atlas Stone. Yeah, and and then and, the, and it's just um, yeah. I know I know you do you do a lot of floor like you know, mm. wrestling. It's gonna have crossover for wrestling. You know, yeah. Grip is really important for wrestling. It is, yeah. <laughs> you know, right? grip. I've watched. I, you know, I'm not a martial artist in any yeah. in any capacity, but I watch a lot of it because I, I I like watching those sort of sports and mm. you know if you've got a good grip, you know it, it's gonna help in takedowns. It's gonna help in holds and Absolutely. chokes. Absolutely, yeah. You know. Um, Having just that endurance and that strength is going to have, again, have crossover. Yeah, that yeah. isometric strength, like even just yeah. some of that on the ball and some of those things, those grips, like they're, um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, um, yeah, that, was, that was a really, it was really fascinating. So, yeah, like I'll tell anyone, yeah, definitely try it. Like it is. Um, yeah, because if you can pick up an 80 kilo Atlas Stone, you can pick up an 80 kilo human being and throw them over your shoulder. Yeah. It's, mm. You know, because it's, um, they're both dead weights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think the big thing, I mean, I don't know if you would agree, because like, I kind of think I asked said before, is I think a lot of people, they would see, let's say, like an Atlas stone, and they think like, oh, it's 50 kilos, there's no way I can pick it up. But then they can do it. Like, maybe they look at, like, a tr more traditional exercise, like, I don't know, a back squat. They say, oh, well, I don't know, a back squat, 100. But they, Tr yeah. You go, I mean, the way I yoked, I picked up, was it 100? Uh, 175. 175. And you were I mean, moving it very easily. Yeah. And I didn't think, like, I yeah. wasn't thinking at first, oh, I don't know, like, you know, I haven't yeah. done much squatting in a while. Like, I'll probably put, uh, maybe 140, be, that'd be it. So, and, and, and yeah. we, quite easily, I, I believe you could have gone to over 200 today. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but, uh, uh, you yeah, know, you're a PT. You yeah. don't want to break people on their first sessions. You want yeah. them to, you want them to come back. Come back. Yeah. Enjoy it. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I just, yeah, it's just, look, I, again, I'm heavily biased. You know, I love it. Um, mm. But I'm also slowing down in it, you know what I mean? Well, technically, because yeah. I've got three competitions. I was going to say, well, we're going to get on to that, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, going back to even strong. Now, I actually read, because um, yeah, I, I try to obviously build, you know, research. Yeah. Now, you actually credit strongman, I guess, a lot for, I guess, turning your life around in terms of the training and... Um, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, would you be able to, I guess, share... Because I know you kind of had to get some some setbacks, and you had, you know, there was a period, yeah, pretty bad periods you had. It was it was it was, it was an interesting period. So yeah, yeah. I, I look, I, uh, I yeah, it's, it's all over my social media. I don't mm. hide it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm nine years clean. Uh, yep. So yeah, I don't I don't drink or partake in illicit drugs mm -hmm. uh, anymore. Yeah. Um, I. Uh, 16th of July 2010 was my first day clean and then I haven't looked back since I'm mm -hmm. pretty, pretty lucky um, getting into training um, was was after the initial period of getting clean and I and, and but it's definitely um, I 
I need to credit a twelve step fellowship for the initial period. Okay. And and still now, you know, and I'm still I'm still thankful to to two twelve step fellowships that I, that I did uh, a lot of work with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just other addicts helping other addicts. Yeah. Um, it's a total abstinence program. That's not for everyone. Yeah. It was the only thing that was going to work for me. Yeah. <laughs> so you tried other things. I tried. I tried. You know, I tried to slow down. I tried. I tried the right combinations. Yeah. No, it just didn't work for me. Yeah. The only thing that works for me is um, total abstinence. You know, I uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately when I, I take a drink or a drug, a switch goes off in my head and I want more. Yeah. And, and I don't know when the switch is going to turn off. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, and then and then I got into strongman. It just really, it just gave uh, focus. Mm. You know, uh, and maybe I, maybe I was doing it addictively. Maybe I'm just you know. I don't know yeah, an, an addictive person. Look, maybe the first twelve months of strong like waist training was definitely very addictive. I, I, I needed because, but I was also finding in parity again. Like I was, you know, I was, I had goals and, and I was just like, yeah, you know, just um, was that. Do you think that period? Because you mentioned there was that period where, as you weren't exercising, was it you? Because you didn't have, you don't think there weren't goals. You didn't have things. Oh, look, I, I definitely, I, I definitely had goals because I, but I was working on corporate goals and. and of oh, okay. And, and very, it, yeah. it was different. It was different. I was, um, yeah. You know, when I got clean, I was thirty two and I didn't have a career, and then I went crap. You yeah. know, most people at thirty two have careers and yeah. uh, and things like that. So at thirty two, I'm like, oh, I better, I better find something to do. You know what yeah, I mean? Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, and, and so I did. You know, I was lucky enough. Um, to work for a company called Yellow Pages, mm -hmm. a really great company. I worked for them for almost five years. Yep. Uh, and and they gave me a career and they taught me things. And, and I didn't have it, you know, I, I didn't, you know, and I kept getting promoted there. I, you know, mm -hmm. I, it's amazing when you turn up every day, work really, really hard, stay back late and all sorts of things. Yeah. I, I know it sounds normal to, to, to other people, but to a drug addict who was hopeless and useless for, for many, many years. Yeah. It was, it was nice, you know. It was a place where I got to learn and, and, and make mistakes, not crazy mistakes. Like I wasn't walking around the office going "if you" and "if you." And, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, But like making corporate mistakes and learning, and, and I asked a lot of questions, and and um, and that became my focus, obviously, to get a career. Yeah. Um, and then I found Strongman, and then obviously I've still got a career, you know. And, um, mm -hmm. But you know, your life things change, like yeah, chasing down the corporate goal of you know squeezing dollars and wanting to be a CEO. Yeah. was something I thought I wanted uh, and then I didn't want it yeah uh, and so now I don't work in corporate anymore mm -hmm. um, corporate was great I loved it I learned so many things mm -hmm. uh, but strongman just gives you so much more yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. yeah yeah I don't know if I made any sense there at all no no you did no, no, absolutely <laughs> but you, you definitely answered my yeah. question yeah that's as I said it's better um now I suppose, well, I guess that kind of goes into it as the work-life balance. Um, yeah. How, I mean, because it sounded like, you know, at one point you had all your eggs, you were just all corporate. And Correct. Then, um, I suppose, what have you done? I mean, what else have you done now, I suppose, to balance it? I mean, what sort of other changes have you made? I, I, I don't take work home. Yeah, I, 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 I needed to learn Yeah. to have, you know, not compartmentalize my life like you know that's work and that's strong man and that's family and and, and for a period of time my life was very com compartmentalized yeah. um you know uh but it was more realizing for me anyway i know some people that are really driven by success and money, money and, and, that, yeah. and that's cool yeah. um i'm not really driven by success and money mm -hmm. i just want to be comfortable yeah and i also want to like what i'm doing um so i was really lucky in corporate i, I liked what i was doing mm -hmm. um but what I'm doing now, I really enjoy more. Mm. So yeah, you know, I get to talk to people about their gyms and and I sell gym equipment. Yeah, you know, so um, I'm a pretty blessed life. Like I spend pretty much all my life in gyms, talking about gyms, yeah. talking to people about yeah. lifting and and, and sure. stuff. Um, yeah, like I'm pretty lucky actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I yeah. know you get it because when you yeah, of course yeah. when you're about the gym life, you know, be it lifting or you know, circuit classes or whatever, when whatever you, it is. Whatever yeah. it is, um, when you get to do it and it's something you're passionate and you love, mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty cool you know, it's pretty blend, cool. when you blend it into yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, 
thanks to Aussie Street for employing me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Aussie. Shout out, shout out to Andy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, for sure. Um, yeah, well, I suppose, actually, I mean, you kind of, I guess you've always answered my next question is, we always want to ask everyone on this podcast, I suppose, what, like, finding what your why is, you know, what drives you, and um, I think you kind of, you kind of have answered that in a way, but... Uh, oh, the why. Yeah, I suppose, what, what, what would you say now that just drives you? I, I just, I, I don't, I don't know how to quit. Yeah. Um, you know, there was one time I had to quit, obviously, it was a groundbreaking moment for my life to quit drugs. But yeah. um, when I was using drugs, I was always trying to, um, I always knew there was a better better way. Yeah. Um, so I was always trying to get clean. Mm. Uh, and then um, my why is, you got one life. Yeah. Fill it. Yeah. Fill it whatever makes you happy. Yeah. You know, so, you know, um, no, I also like steam trains. So whenever I get an opportunity, I go and check out steam trains. Yeah. Like, just, that's the why. Do what makes you happy. Yeah. You know, if it's not hurting someone else, then it's okay. It's okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's what maybe everyone's why should be. So, you know, for a little bit, my why was chasing down the corporate goal. And, and I truly thought I was going to be a CEO. Like, that, that was my aim. And I was looking at doing degrees and that sort of thing. Yeah. To go that, head in that direction. Mm-hmm. And then I had a moment where I went, crap no no I don't want to do this yeah you know um, so yeah my wife is just doing things that make make me happy make you happy yeah yeah because that's, that's what life's about isn't it like, yeah you know, yeah doing things that make you happy that don't hurt other people yeah yeah you know? that's really well said yeah 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 so do whatever makes you happy as long as you're not hurting other people yeah you know, I think that, that yeah, that's just what it should be mm-hmm. um yeah, but it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean like go out and quit your job because you hate it. Like, yeah. you've got to be responsible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, you got to, but I don't know, we're here once. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't believe in reincarnation uh, or past lives and that, you know, if you do, that's cool. Sure. I yeah. just don't think, you know, I just, we've got one life and, and yeah. it, can, it can end really quickly. Just, just, yeah. Through accidents, you know what I mean? Like, you know. I saying, yeah. So, do what do what makes you happy today. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know that's a fantastic answer. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Great insight there. Now, as well as going back, uh, we'll go to the present now, competitions now. Yep. You said you were going to slow down. I did, but, at, the, um, at, the, at the start of the year, yep. Yeah. But it seems now, competitions keep adding up, piling up your... Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. after China... Because I was competing in China recently, and, and a great experience, and I got to compete alongside um, some exceptional athletes. Mm. You know, I mean, I got to compete as you know, like Nathan Zygmunt, who won the competition. Yeah. Exceptional young guy in, in, mm-hmm. in here in Melbourne. I uh, he lives in Broadfield. He's twenty one, and and one of the most exciting young strong men coming through. Coming through, yeah. Um, I got to compete as alongside Luke Reynolds, who's a pro athlete, amazing guy. Um, you know, and then and then. And another two mates of mine, Sean Poole and Macaulay Tinker, mm-hmm. those guys killed it. Like they had an amazing competition. I had the worst competition in my life. Mm-hmm. I, I made some mistakes. Uh, I was ill prepared, mm-hmm. um, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got a little bit angry. Yeah. Not at them. Yeah. Like, you know, because it, it was potentially going to be like you know, it might be not my retirement competition. But I was thinking, oh, maybe this will be my last one. Yeah. And I've come back, and I'm like, nah, fuck at that. Yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah. No, I'm like, and, and as my hashtag always says on on, on Instagram, not done yet. Like, not I'm done not yet. done yet. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I think I'm done, yeah. there's a little thing inside that goes, no, you're not. No, you're uh, not. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I sort of feel like uh, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio in um, Wolf of Wall Street when he goes, yeah, yeah. I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> My friend says to me, I say it to, I say it to my, I said it to my, my long suffering mother, I'm going to quit strongman. She doesn't yeah. like it because it's such a heavy sport. And of course. She thinks yeah. I'm going to die every time I lift something. And, oh. <laughs> and I, and I have passed out maybe three times, yeah. you know, too much blood to the head. And, and, yeah. and, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm going to retire. I'm going to retire. And then I'm like, I'm not fucking leaving because yeah. that's how I feel. Like I, 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 I'm not ready to leave it just yet. And I think it's because I need to compete. 
Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm putting some wheels in motion where I might, I'll still be doing like things like Highland Games and some strongman stuff, mm-hmm. but I might actually uh, pursue rowing again as a master's athlete. Oh, wow, well, okay. Um, so that I can just keep competing. Because, yeah. uh, you know, I'm an athlete. Like, I'm, a, I'm not an elite athlete, but I'm an athlete and I need to compete. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm driven by competing. Yeah. Um, I need I need to be chasing down a goal or a dream. Yeah. Or, yeah. And it makes me happy when I compete. So I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a really big take for a local is those having that. It's so important to have goals and have things to, to work towards. I mean, yeah. I even said to a client today, I was trying to really stress him about how, like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like some ridiculous like you have to go to the Olympics no. or just have something you know that you want to work towards because you know there's no point just doing something to the state doing not even yeah yeah not even work for it you know what, what's what's the point like where do you want to that's it it's, yeah and, and, and it's really important you know to have goals in everything yeah um, you know obviously with work we have where work sets goals for us like KPIs yeah. and things that we have to but do it doesn't carry across the, it's funny the exercise it's like people forget it's yeah. the same thing like you can have goals correct, correct. Yeah, I, yeah, so, and I, and I um, yeah, I love it when I hear people are like no I want to lose um, like realistic goals when people go I'd, I'd like to lose 10 kilos in the next couple of months that's a realistic goal yeah you know, I always uh, I, don't, I don't laugh but you know, people go oh, I want to lose t- 10 kilos in a month yeah you could do it but maybe not sustainably or healthily yeah uh, not healthily it's not even a word in a, in a healthy manner that's going to be sustainable like um, you know having, having goals is really important um, yeah you know everyone you know and, and everyone who walks into a gym for the first time has an image or a goal in mind in their head yeah you know what I mean um, whether they want to be just a wee bit fitter or a wee bit happier or a wee bit this you know um, or they've got a wedding, you know, someone's wedding coming up, or their own wedding coming up. Yeah, it is. Like, it doesn't, yeah. You know, or well, they just want to be able to, you know, walk around the block without being puffed out. Being puffed out, yeah. And as a heavyweight strongman, that happens all the time. <laughs> 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 we did say the car, the conditioning, your death. Yeah, yeah. Look, I got back on a roller this week. Yeah. And it was a very humbling experience. Yeah. You know, in, um, oh, the old erg. Oh. The ergs, it's uh, it's going to become my friend. Yep. Uh, it's 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 been I've I've programmed it in twice a week, and I'm following uh, a, a a program from the British uh, British Rowing um, Club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just going to be it's just going to be a whole lot of suck and a whole lot mm-hmm. of hurt. Um, because I'm still going to do strength training as well as throwing in this. Stu- yeah, throwing this. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah. As well as. Yeah, the next couple of months are going to be crazy. Mm. I'll be potentially only having one rest day a week, which is, I know it's borderline dangerous. Yeah. But uh, oh, let's see if the old the old body can take it. Yeah. You know I, mean? I think mentally, mentally you can just keep pushing yourself through as long as you don't do any major injuries. Like you, mm. can, you can you can push your body through. Your body will adapt. Yeah. You know, you push it, the body adapts. You push it, the body adapts. Mm-hmm. It's it's. It's a pretty amazing vessel that we've been given. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you push it, it adapts. adapts you push it, yeah. it adapts. You know, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 how we got to where we are now. Correct. Um, yeah. Because you know, the body adapts and it evolves and, and, mm-hmm. it, and it mutates in a way. You yeah. Know? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the greatest athletes in the world didn't start off as the greatest athletes. Yeah. You know, some of them definitely have you know. Better genetics, genetics or yeah, whatever. Of course, they yeah. still have to work hard. They still Absolutely. have to push through. You know what I mean, Usain Bolt didn't become the fastest man in history just from genetics. Yeah, yeah. You know, he pushed his body. He pushed his body. He trained. Yeah. He trained. Right, yeah. And um, you know, the uncomfortable became comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what that's what we all do in training mm. at all levels. The uncomfortable needs to become comfortable. Then you just keep pushing. Yeah. The bar. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, the next next four months are really wicked. Yeah, so coming up, so we've got a, we'll walk us through, so we've got a, in October, uh, kicks off the... No, so it kicks off in I, uh, August 24th. Oh, August, okay. Yeah. So Mason from Stand or Submit has um, created this thing called The Contest. Yeah. It's a team event, I believe that there's uh, around about 10 teams from yeah. Australia and New Zealand. Uh, it's uh, a coach 
two men, two women, um, and it's a mystery. No one knows what the events are. Wow. Uh, we know that it's in the Castlemaine area, uh, that you know, there's a briefing at 5.30, and we'll get all the details of yeah. where, where to be. I don't normally like mystery events, because I, I, when it comes to programming, and, and yeah, of course. I like to know. Yeah. Um, but this is exciting, so I'm, I'm, mm. I'm training for it, but how do you train for a competition where you don't know what the, what the events are gonna be? Right. So I'm just training for other another competition and hope Hell. that there's some that, you know, yeah 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 um, but that, that, that is potentially one of the more exciting competitions um, ever created mm. in the world um, because it's a complete mystery. The only people that know what it's going to be, you know, people like Mason and a few of his people that he's just sworn to yeah, secrecy. Yeah, of course, because even something like that, like yeah, little, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know some of the people who have gone to test and I would never ask because you know it defeats the purpose of the no, of course. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? um, but I might threaten them um. <laughs> <laughs> you see they've got a yoke in there been like, is I there hope a, there's a yoke in is there is there a yoke because oh, it's, it's like my best event yeah. um, I used to uh, you know I'm sort of like a one trick pony when it comes to strong men like I'm really good at yoke and then yeah. I'm like above average at maybe a few other things yeah. um, uh, look I, maybe there'll be yoke yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I. There was a, a, a an image the other day with yeah you know, a big circle in the sand. Yeah. Uh, and one of the old early uh, world strongest man was they used to have sumo wrestling. Yeah. I love it. It was sumo wrestling. You know, because I mean? mm. it's just it'd be very the rugby crossover. I think they tried to bring the sumo wrestling here. Yeah. I think. I mean, if they did, I'd man, I'd be. It'd be, I, I, yeah. I would be amazing to watch. You know, I think, like, yeah. They are elite athletes. Even though they're like 400 pounds, they are they elite are. athletes. Yeah. Like they're actually really fit and healthy under, well, fit and healthy to, for, for, yeah. to a point. To a point, yeah. Um, their food intake is off the charts. Yeah. Off the charts, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see Sumo. But we, I'm digressing yeah. because it's just yeah, like, yeah. But, uh, so I got that competition. Yep. Uh, then on the, 21st of September I'm heading up to Nelson's Bay um, for the East Coast Heavy Games so Highland Games okay it's the, the biggest Highland Games in Australia as far as I'm, I'm aware it's the biggest one yep. uh, uh, it's 10 events in one day so uh, it's there's two shot put events yeah um, there's two hammer events hammer events yeah it's two two weight for distance, like light a light weight for distance, a heavy weight for distance. Yeah. Um, so you get three attempts at all those six. Yeah, sure. Um, then you've got uh, the caber, mm-hmm. okay, well, which is the, the post. Oh. And you've got to end over end. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's I, 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 look. It's it's not a heavy instrument. It's very technical. So it, again, it's not something I can really train. So it's it's a, a a yolo wish for the best sort of thing on the yeah. day. Um, uh, wait for wait for height, yep. which I, I was pretty good at, mm-hmm. uh, and sheaf a sheaf tossing. So twenty pound sheaf on a pitchfork, and you've got to swing it up over. Right. Um, I don't think I've actually seen that before. But it's very. It's a very it's a very old old school. I was going to say it doesn't get much older than that. No, it's pretty old school. Yeah. And, um, I actually my uh, great grandfather. Used to compete in sheaf tossing in in Kilmore out okay. in the day back in the you know uh, early nineteen hundreds. So yeah. um, it would be cool to finally mm. try that because I love you know. Uh, what is your heritage? It is. Uh, it's Welsh, Irish, and English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hence the red hair and, and <laughs> the skin that doesn't like the sun. Um, uh, and then the last event, which is optional, but there's no optional events. I said, yeah. Um, is the Dinny, the, the, not the Dinny Stones, the real Dinny Stones, but their yeah. version of the Dinny Stones. So one sure. stone's I think 124, the other one's 145. Weird, okay. weird angles, weird pickup points. Yeah. Um, and you have 90 seconds, as many pickups to walk it as far as possible. Wow. The Australian record is 30 meters. Yeah. Which is crazy. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure it's held by a gentleman by the name of Craig Reed, who is a legend in, in Highland Games in Australia. Um, and I think the next closest mark, I could be wrong, I did, I did check the facts, but yeah. is, is Luke Reynolds, who, who did 15 metres. Like, it's, 
Craig Reed has. Some, wow, that's quite a. Yeah, yeah, look, I could be wrong. There could be some, some stuff. But still, there. even like it sounded, there's still a bit of a discrepancy. Like, yeah. Um, he also holds the record for um, sheaf tossing. So it's yeah. 30 feet with a 20 pound sheaf. Uh, wow. Like, with a motion like this and flicking. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Like you know, these guys are incredible athletes. Mm. Um, so to to have been invited to come along and compete at that games. Um, is, a, is, is an honour. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm. Obviously, as someone who goes really appreciates the history. And I love the history. It, yeah. yeah, I love the history. Um, and I love the fact that I've got some of my own family history um, on, on both my mum's side and my dad's and side dad's in street like, yeah. sports. So, um, yeah, oh, awesome. And then Victoria's Strongest Man, which is only late October. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is, all, which is a qualifier for the Arnold. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, if I go top three, I qualify for the Arnold's and mm-hmm. you know, not done yet. Not fucking leaving. Not fucking leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So yeah. we'll see. We could be having this conversation again in two years. Like, we could, yeah. Like, I'm still doing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, the, as long as the body holds up, I'll still compete. Yeah. Uh, in, in doing some, strongman and of course, games. And, some. Um, but I, I, I do like the idea of you know dropping 20 kilos I'm currently sitting at about 140 yeah you know to, to row in a boat again I'd need to drop at least another I'd need to drop 20 kilos yeah um, it'd be nice to row again mm-hmm. I'd like to see if I could do it yeah um, but yeah just you know I, where I live is right next to in Geelong it's, it's at the end of my street is, is the Barwon River where I used to I did yeah, most memory of my lane. Yeah, I was going to say, get our memory lane there. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was walking. I was walking you know, on the weekend. I was walking there with my girlfriend, and and I was talking her through the race. You know, like we, we, yeah. we walked down to the start, and then we walked back. And it's only a 1500 meter course, and it's got some slight turns. And it's not the greatest course in the world, but yeah, sure. Um, it was just it was nice to reminisce. Yeah, and, and and I was frothing a little bit. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to do it again. Like do it again. Yeah. Because it sucks. Like it's it's a it's mm. the, it's more brutal than strongman. It's a, it's it's a horrible sport if you're if you're weak. And I don't mean like weak, but weak in mind and, and, and not willing to push through the pain barrier. Mm. Because at the 500 meter mark in any race, mm. like you're in a world of suck. Mm-hmm. Like everything hurts, yeah. and the lactic acid is like mm. brutal. And yeah. you just push through. I mean, I always forget the name, but they made always a real big deal about that female role, the one that race. Where oh, she collapsed, but like I have no comment. Yeah, because because you know no, no, fair, fair enough. But like because I, I, I've rode yeah. and I don't, you I, not, I, yeah. but, I, but I don't know what happened. Yeah, like I don't know enough. But it's a really awful sport. It's a it's a yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a completely unforgiving sport. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, it's the ultimate team sport. So that that event that yeah. really hurt hurt the team. It did. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I don't know like I, I don't know that lady I can't even remember her name yeah but I do remember it just when I saw that I went oh yeah and not because like oh her but just like oh that's gonna suck because you're really exposed yeah and, uh, and so there was another you know she was rowing in an eight it was an eight that's, that's where that's exactly yeah. what made it being was in an eight you just think like I mean, a, my mind was thinking of seven other people well there's like, eight other people because of the cocks oh sorry well. of yeah I was thinking in their thoughts like, what about their thinking yeah. at that time like yeah like yeah. yeah and that was Olympics wasn't it final it was uh, it was not Olympics it was a world it was, it was, it was big it was big yeah I, yeah. oh man it was, I felt I really felt yeah. that, that young lady because man, it's just Something happened. I don't know what it was. Mm. Um, uh, and I, I, yeah, yeah, maybe she cramped. I don't know. Yeah, but it, it, it's just it, it, that's well, what we'll out s- of all the sports, we'll, we'll spit you out if you're not ready. Absolutely. I mean, I remember you know sport and studies of the energy systems, and yes, I couldn't find another sport that kind of blended had all three as close together. Like I actually can't think of another sport that has. It's uh, pretty hard because yeah, you think about the also the aerobics huge. Yes. And then you know, like sort of like that ATP at lactate is massive too. It's like it's roof. I don't know if it says like sixty four maybe more, but it is close. Like yeah. when you think about it, like a lot of people might think it's just a pure aerobic, but there's a lot more. Absolutely, and yeah. then and then and then and there's a lot of strength too. There is, yeah. Um, you know, there's when you're when you when you get up into the catch position and you're about to pull back, like you, yeah, it's big leg drive. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your arms need to be strong too, but the arms need to be just quick to get the, the, yeah. blade, the blade out of the water. Yeah, the um, legs just... But it's just big leg drive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, and, it's, and it's strong core standing up and just pop, you know. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I get excited mate. just talking about it. Actually. I know. I yeah. was at, my, my, be, my best mate Rose for Australia. He's um, oh wow. Yeah, they he's hopefully make next um next games. And, cool. Um, Very cool. I mean, I used to always watch him all the time. Like yeah. And again, like I mean, compared to his boat now, he's the smallest in the boat. Yeah. And what? Uh, he's what? Yeah. Six four. He's like yeah, it's been six hundred and ten kilos. Four. Or oh, he's kilos? lighter. He's probably maybe oh about ninety. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen him in a few years because he just lives in his suitcase. Yes. And he's just yeah, going yeah. around training, but um. I met the guys and he's one time I went out it was funny went out the night out and um, I met every single one of them and I was like 6'8 like, like yeah. he was the smallest so yes. he's like and yeah it was like yeah, I went around this group of yeah nine men you know and like all of them even the Cox was taller than me too yeah. I was like far out <laughs> it's, it's, it is a sport for giants it is but they have the lightweight division now so it allows yeah um, yeah smaller people to get not smaller I should say smaller people but like yeah. anyway we get in trouble for saying that. Yeah. Um, it, it, have, opening up the lightweight division opened up the sport to more people. But that's, you could say the same thing with strong man as well. Absolutely, we've got the weight divisions, it's amazing. It's I mean, cool. a lot of people obviously they see it, they always think the TV, I think, or like, obviously the heavyweights, the big. Like, I'm biased, heavyweight's more oh, exciting. Cool. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. But I'll <laughs> get in trouble for that. Yeah, yeah, no. But uh, yeah, look now, like, you have actually like some weight divisions, you have you know, males, females, you have like a, a 70 kilo man. You have, yeah, so you got under 80s, under 90s, under yeah. 105, heavyweight. Uh, and now with the the ladies, there's another. There was another weight division that opened up uh, this uh, week or two ago. Yeah. So it's now. Oh crap! I'll get this wrong. I bet you I'll get it wrong. I think yeah. it's under sixty two point five, under seventy two point five. Wow. Yeah. Um, under eighty two point five, and then open class. Mm. All around about that. So there's now four 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 weight divisions for the ladies. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that really just opens it up. Like, so it's just um, yeah, and look, it's made the, it made the sport more inclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Oh, very good. Now, I suppose I always like to throw up this little curveball question at yep. people. So, if you were, I guess, in my shoes, yes, what would you have asked yourself that I did? Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, off the top of my head I can't think of anything actually it's been a really in- in- inclusive um, this is a good thing this is a good one this, this is, is got me this stumped is a, this is a good thing yeah uh, I usually gauge this where I know the <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I, 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 honestly off the top of my head I can't think of anything um It's been a po- it's been a positive podcast. I, I, there's been no, I, I, I'm I'm glad you asked. You know, like what what's something that you wish you'd done? Mm. Um, that's about the only thing I could think of. And the only thing I wish I'd done is I, I wish I'd done strongman sooner. Yeah. You know. Or yeah. I, I mean, or I'd, or I'd yeah. stuck with, um, or I'd stuck with rowing. Right. But I, I I don't really look at them as regrets because mm. you know your life path is your life path. Yeah, and I mean, at the time you went a different path. You went the corporate path. Yeah, like, you know, it yeah. Was different. You had different. Yeah. yeah, I had different. I did different things. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, it's yeah. I think look, everyone, not everyone. Some people like myself have lived a colourful life. Yeah, and we have things that we regret. But yeah. you can't live in regret. I just yeah. need to yeah. accept that. Hey, some stuff happens. Stuff happens. Yeah, but for me to move forward. I just need to let it go. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I was I was gifted a second chance. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of um, you know, either, either directly or indirectly, we all know someone who's a drug addict who didn't make it, or yeah. who's still a drug addict, or still an alcoholic, or sure. You know, so I was gifted a second chance, and and oh, I'm not I'm not fucking leaving. Like yeah. you know, I'm not I'm not. Yeah. I'm, you know, every day I'm grateful. Um, and I, I yeah. You have about nine years. It was nine years last week. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Yeah. Ten years. I'm going to Vegas to eat all the seafood buffets. Yeah. Seriously, a mate of mine is like, 
Give me ten years. Let's go to see. Let's go to Vegas and shoot big guns and eat all the food. Yeah, the crab like, legs are good. Yeah, uh, everyone talks about the crab. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't partake in the party scene either anymore. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, let's go to Vegas and shoot guns and eat food. Yeah, um, I can't think of anything better. That'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. You know, yeah. UFC, UFC as well. That's no, what I was. There's so much stuff to do in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, Just stay yeah. away from the gambling. I'm, stay not, away from the I'm gambling. not interested in gambling. I'm yeah. not interested in the booze and the dancing girls. But the food buffets. I hear the food yeah. buffets are like ten dollars all you can eat, and they're primo. So imagine that. I'd come back 160 kilos after a week. <laughs> awesome. I'd be like a yeah. pro, pro. I'd be pro uh, strongman weight. Weight, yeah. Not skill. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now. Before we get on, we're gonna get into a little bit of fun here though. Yep. So, we do what's called the 20 questions. Yes. So, pretty much rapid fire. Uh, this is how we like to close. It's normally yep. gonna, it's gonna basically require one or a few word answers. Yes. And uh, yeah, are you ready to begin? Absolutely, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Question number one. Squats or deadlifts? Always deadlifts. Okay. Bench press or strict press? I like strict press. Oh, okay. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uncomfortable, comfortable. What yeah. are you talking about? Sled push or sled drag? Sled pull. Uh, sled push. Sled push? Yeah. Okay. Sled drag. Last time I did proper sled drag, I tore my calf muscles and so bugger that. Ah, okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, barbells or kettlebells? Oh, barbells. Some days I think I might know the answer, but we asked. Kettlebells are great. I just yeah. don't really use them. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say yeah. They're good for stabilization, yeah. one arm stabilization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Truck push or truck pull? I've never done a truck push, uh, so I'm gonna go with truck pulls, and they're lots of fun. Yeah. Yeah, lots of fun. All right. Three things that you can't live without. Food. Yep. Uh, lifting weights. Yep. And this is gonna be really soppy, but my girlfriend, I'm, I'm, I'm totally loved up. Okay. Yep. Oh, good for you. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite sports team? I'm a long suffering. I uh, two. So uh, Liverpool Football Club. In, in I love I love Liverpool. Yeah. Um, and and the Wallabies. I'm a long suffering Wallabies fan. Okay. It's been very hard to be a Wallabies fan. I was going to say Liverpool. Yes. Great. Yeah. Great season. Great season. Uh, most annoying habit. I bite my fingernails when I'm driving. I'm the same, man. Yeah. yeah. And I do a lot of driving. Yeah. So I'm like, no, yeah, yeah. I have to stop doing that. Yeah. Favorite movie? Dead Poets Society. Okay. Because I, I went to a stuffy nose school. Yeah. And it was yeah, stuffy nose. Yeah. And I desperately wanted an English teacher. Yeah. Like Robin Williams. Yep. And I know you yeah. went to, I'm I not did. sure if your school was as stuffy nose as that. Oh, but it was, yeah. Yeah. I just desperately wanted yeah. free thinking. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Favorite song? Welcome to the Jungle is my yeah. is my song. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's my that's my go to jam song yeah. to get ready for a big lift. Yeah, yeah. They used to actually tell you say my brother and I had this thing when we were in the car. That was the song we put on. We're about a minute, two minute away from driving into the gym. Nice. Had to be welcome to the gym. Nice. Like, yeah. Always. Welcome. And and yeah, and <laughs> it's. Uh, I, 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 I used to listen to this before Andre Milanashev um, one of the greatest powerlifters of all time mm. the, the greatest has the heaviest the, the greatest raw total of all time I think it's 11.35 kilos could be wrong if I'm yep. wrong I apologise um, that's his walkout song awesome yeah I don't I didn't pick it because of that but it's pretty cool that the great, I'm not saying I'm the greatest powerlifter he's one of the greatest powerlifters yeah. of all time has the same walkout song so. there you go yeah. Yeah. works for him has works, to work it has to work for you yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, question 11, burgers or tacos? That's a tough question. Yeah, one. I'm gonna go tacos, but they have to be soft shell. Okay. Yeah. Good answer. I think better answer, actually. Uh, one word to describe you. Persistent. Uh, what three things would you take on a desert island? Uh, a full gym setup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never any food supply. Yeah. Uh, and Netflix. That's you, pretty good. You've got to watch Netflix. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah, very good. Uh, favorite holiday destination? 
I haven't holidayed that much, but as a kid, my parents used to take us down to Fairhaven, which is down past Aries Inlet. Yeah. Uh, and I have the best childhood memories of going to Fairhaven, and, and I head down there every couple of weeks just to do it. It's okay. my favourite place. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit more built up than it was when I was a kid. Back then, yeah. But it still just, just brings back fond memories. Awesome. Uh, favorite word in English? <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna answer this question <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's not a PG word. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. You know, I did have Christian Woodford on the. I know. I mean, I know. Was, they, they couldn't vet anymore. Oh, you know what? Like my favorite word in English <laughs> is fuck. Yeah. I just I just love it. It's such a versatile word. My mum will hate me for saying that because yeah. you know, I meant to this. I was I was wasn't raised to swear. Yeah. It's not my parents' fault. Um, but uh, you know the word is so versatile. Yeah. We be, certainly in Australia know how to use a word. We, we, we know can how use it for anything. As a noun, as an adverb, yeah. as a verb, as a pronoun. It's it's an amazing word. Yeah. Yeah. I will agree with you on that. Though, yeah. necessarily. <laughs> I'll give you that. For a good. There you go. Just better round. What's the best Wi-Fi name you have seen? Oh, one I saw one years ago. <laughs> it was fuck off ASIO. Oh really? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was our mate's house <laughs> and I was looking because yeah. you know, when you get every time you go to your mate's house you have to use someone else's Wi Fi. So you can download shit because it's not your Wi Fi. We've all got Wi Fi. And I came up with one that said, fuck off ASIO. And I was showing my mate, he's like, yeah, that's a guy two days down the road. He's like, yeah. he's a really funny guy, but I think he's paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Probably yeah. a tinfoil hat guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Nice. Actually, now this is a good question because when I wrote this, you then put something up, but I'm going to ask anyway. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about putting pineapple on pizza? I just. <laughs> <That's>, oh. <that's, laughs> it, it, okay. <laughs> no, pineapple should not be on pizza. I don't. I, it's not for me. But you know, like for people who choose to put pineapple on pizza, that's your jam. Go for it. Go Knock for yourselves it. out. I like putting stinky fish on my pizza. Yeah. I don't know. Lots of people don't like putting stinky fish on my pizza. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I I'm right. You're wrong. You're that's wrong. okay. That's okay. Yeah. So if I I had that question. I, I saw it in your story. I'm like, oh, this would be good. This would be good. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, like a friend of mine. And my girlfriend, you know, so my girlfriend Kat and her coach, you know, Lauren Green, who's incredible powerlifter, mm. wears, um, uh, they always, they always say, oh, well, you're not going to get the gains because you haven't got the, you know, yeah. the, uh, the pineapple and you know what, like, I'm okay then. You're okay then. I'll, I'll do without the pineapple gains. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll just eat more protein. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> all right. Question number 19. What makes you bored? Victims. Victims? Yeah. Okay. And I'm not talking like victims of crime. Yeah, yeah. But people who play the victim. Okay. Yeah. You know, I understand that in life we all go through stuff. Sure. You know, and, and, and I'm not talking about people like going through a hard time. Yeah. But I get bored with people who are sitting in the same shit and they're yeah. talking about the same stuff. And they don't change. They don't change. And I just think... And I've been there myself. So, you know, I always think that when something pisses you off, it's often a reflection of something that, a behavior that yeah. you used to do or you still currently do. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, victims piss me off. Okay. Not like to the point where I'm like, shut up, you're a fucking victim. Like, I'd never say that to someone. Yeah. I think it's rude. Um, but I just think there's always a way out. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just got to humble yourself and ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, think. Yeah, especially in a country like Australia, like we we, we have options. Yeah. I'm not saying everyone has options, but yeah, you know, yeah, some people haven't really. Yeah, but in Australia, the vast majority of us have options, mm-hmm. uh, and we have options for health, health yeah. and health, and and finances. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, like there's there's things. So I just think um, in, in 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 a great country like Australia, yeah, you you can you can find help if you're willing to ask for it. Mm-hmm. or look for it look or for do it, yeah. something or be proactive sure yeah, yeah. 
Sorry, right. sorry to get all spiritual at the end of it. But. No, no, that, that's a good answer. <laughs> that's a very good answer. I mean, it was one word, but it was a good, very yeah, good. Sorry, it covered it very well. Uh, all right. Well, last question. What is the most ridiculous fact you know? <laughs> so there's a good one there. Uh, the other uh, most ridiculous fact I know is that as a redhead, I produce more vitamin D for less amount of sun time, and that I require um, more anesthesia than normal people because we're fucking mutants and we're stronger. <laughs> I know lots of stuff about redheads because being at an yeah. all boys school and being picked on for having this big mop of red hair, yeah. I was like, fuck you guys. I'm yeah. going to find out how amazing I am yeah. being a redhead. And you know what? We're amazing. Yeah. We are the mutants. So watch out. Mm. I'm like Wolverine. Yeah. Well, watch out. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I guess, I guess it's always so much, the brother. best way to always like to, I mean, we finished the questions, but how can people find you? Uh, social media or... Yeah. Or reach you? Yeah, it's... Uh, um, I'm on Instagram, Damien underscore Big Rig underscore Jones, I think it is. Yeah. It's a pretty ridiculous one. <laughs> um, I'm also... Um, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook as Damien Jones. It's I-A-N, not E-N. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. My Instagram is, is public. My mm-hmm. Facebook sometimes is, sometimes isn't. So, yeah. Yeah. So for Instagram, best place Instagram to reach Instagram's best place, yeah. Like for competitions and all things like... Yeah, yeah. Things, Damien. And then, you know, random hating on pineapple on pizza. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's where we go. <laughs> that's where we go. All right, awesome. Well, so this is episode 105. Let's see if you want to find out more, you go on to PT forward slash podcast for more information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. That was awesome.